Hi, this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, today I'm going to paint a few sunflowers on this walnut stain tray. It's actually an old cabinet, or not actually not an old cabinet door, it's a cabinet door that had never been used and so I stained it. So that's already ready to go and now I'm just going to paint on it. And I'm going to start by painting the center of my sunflowers. And I'm going to go ahead and begin. Now, again, when you're painting something, if you're not good at doing stuff by freehand, you're not sure how you want to set it up or, or whatnot, feel free to draw what you need to draw. I basically like to just go in and just do it however I want to do it. So if you are more comfortable with going ahead and drawing yours out, you know, definitely feel free to do that but I'm not going to show it that way here. Again, my, my demonstrations are basically to give you ideas on what can be done, not what you have to do. Um, do it your way, whatever you feel comfortable with. And also keep in mind too, when you're seeing my work, I am left-handed. So if I start a certain direction and you're not left-handed, you might actually need to start the opposite direction as to what I'm starting. Um, also, I do use folk art enamels on just about everything. If you're familiar with my videos, you're already familiar with that. I know that they're for glass paint, or glass, they're paint for glass, I should say. I understand that, but I use them on everything, have for years, and have been quite happy with the product. I have tried other paints, and I just still come back to this. I'm not sure if it's because I like the sheen of it. It is, even if you use it on on wood, whatnot, you know, it comes off easily if you need to repaint over it, because I'm sure that could possibly be a concern for some. You know, what does it do? How does it respond to painting over with a latex paint when you're using an enamel? It's fine. There's really really not a worry with it. Okay, now I'm just going through here and just putting in some what will be smaller, smaller little uh, flowers. And again, these are for my, these are for my sunflowers. I happen to love sunflowers, by the way. And just to let you know, I am starting out with a scruffy brush. This is a one-stroke brush. I'm using burnt sienna and burnt umber. Is, okay, I just want to make sure that that's actually really what I'm using. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I just put school bus yellow, sunflower yellow, and a touch of white into my my paint for my leaves or actually they're my petals excuse me and then you know like this one I feel like needs to go a little bit further so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and you can run it into the center a little bit to kind of pull out some of the brown you know that's fine Now some people do them just as one petal around around their sunflowers. However you want to do it is fine. That is up to you. I've done them both ways, especially when I've done glass. All right. All right. And this is going to be a serving tray, just like my other flower. I did a post yesterday, which was a, a larger single flower. And I did that. This is going to, it's going to be turned into when they need to with, with painting on something besides a wall. You can actually turn it so that you can do, you know, a better, a better, um, painting. Okay, I'm going to go like that. 
And I'm going to go like this. I need to touch that up though. It's driving me crazy. Okay. And just keep going. Going around. I'm sorry. I should have more paint on my brushes, but I'm trying not to overdo it too. Which I have a tendency to do. And I'm sorry if you start hearing any noise. My daughter just came home from work and her dog is very loud and her husband and my husband. So it can be crazy in my household at times. My daughter's and husband and baby have just, there's the bark. Hopefully you're not hearing that too badly. Um, I try to do my videos down in the basement where I can, you know, not be interrupted. However, it doesn't always work that way. I'll go back over this one. I'm not happy with how that turned out. I'm not happy with that either. I could do this kind of a leaf. I want to fix that. So one thing I don't like about painting on these trays is the fact that uh, we have the ledge around it. And I can run the pedal up it if I want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Alright, so I'm continuing to do this. And I'm sorry, these newer videos are going to be a little bit longer because I am painting. And actually, you know what? I want to make sure I'm still in view here. And I can clean that off. I can use a little rubbing alcohol and get that off. Not to worry. I'm not sure why I like sunflowers so much, but I really do. You can actually, if you want to make it like you have movement in your flowers, you can actually, uh, you know, do some little twists in your in your petals too. I'm not going to do that for the purpose of this right now. I'm not real fond of this one. Over here, these are going to just be partials. going to have some, and I just kind of like them to be in different directions. And just do partials here. Just leave it at that. I'm going to get two. Sometimes you can kind of overpaint too. Alright, let me see. Oh, I am back at the beginning. Okay, let me do this one. Which way do I want it to be? I think I'm going to want it to go this way, kind of in. Like I said, I, I just like to wing, wing things. 
too much planning. I mean, give yourself an idea, but it doesn't have to be exact. You know, sometimes I plan it out or I have a painting that I like and I kind of base it off of that. Um, you know, style that I'm, I'm really interested in. And actually for that one, I think I might just leave it at that. Let's see, how many do I have here? Yeah, I think I might just leave it at that. Now, like I said, what, what you could do if you wanted to go back through and add add more petals because some of them some of them you know do have you know two different sets you can go back in and do this this is kind of why I made the outer ones a little bit longer and just go around it again and just try to hit the the middle the middle of the other rows if you can I'm going to do this one like that. And the thing of it is with painting, I know I've said this on some of my other videos, I'm basically self-taught. So anything I'm showing you may not be by the book exact. A lot of it is because I've painted for so long. It's my own technique, my own take on something. So I don't want you to feel like you know, you can't sit down and do this yourself, figure it out, figure out something that you're, you know, a technique that you can do that, that's good for you. Definitely, feel free, don't be afraid. I mean, all you can do is redo it, throw it away, <laughs> whatever, but you don't have to be afraid to try. I mean, I took a lot of uh, chances and just did big things. You know, from walls, I mean, I started out, really, I started out uh, painting uh, for stenciling. It was my favorite thing. And I know really nowadays there's a whole lot of really, really neat stenciling that can be done that really looks, I mean, really makes a pop. You know, it's, it's definitely a skill, not just putting a stencil up and painting. But I just started freehanding, and then I found out about Donna Dewberry and fell in love basically with that and I eventually finally got into a class because I was trying so hard to, to learn the technique and get certified to teach it and everybody kept canceling every time I would get into a class like something local it would cancel and then I finally found a teacher in Indiana, I'm in Ohio, in Indiana, that would, was going to have a session. And I finally was able to take her class and get certified to teach it. Which it was like, God, it took years, 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 literally, for me to be able to do that. Close to the end of this part of it. I go into this crazy one. At some point I'll show you what I mean by making your petals have look like they have some movement to them. I mean I really like to do that, but I don't do it that often because of how where I paint, what I paint. I don't tend to do it that much, but I love it. I love when something looks like it's it's actually moving. I like the winds blowing it. Should be the best thing, best uh, I guess way to compare it. Okay, so you're not finished yet with the flower. I then go back over it, and I want to turn it back to my beginning point. I go back over it to finish off and to give you know clear up and to make this connect a little bit more um, and you can make it darker again if you want I 
All right, and I'll just do the same thing on this one. Just go around like I initially did. And you might be pulling some color in from the, the petals. That's fine. It's perfectly fine. Actually, when you do that, it gives it more interest. I like more interest. Having a third, fourth color in a project is, is perfect. I mean, if you feel you need to do more, I'm going to go around it again. If you want to darken it up a little bit, put more of that red back into it, do it. Go for it. And see, it just kind of connects it into, back into the leaves again. And I didn't go over this one, so maybe I should. All right, so there you have that part of it. And like I said, this part that got up here, I'm going to take some, some rubbing alcohol and get that off of there. The next step that I do now, you can, you know, sometimes people will come in and, and put some dots, some different colored dots in here that even come down onto the petals, which is fine. Or you can take a little bit of like the sunflower yellow and just do some interest, you know, points of interest in, in here that are kind of like sunspots or whatnot, you know, however you want to do it. It's a matter of your preference. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and start working on adding in some leaves. And I don't know, originally I was going to do this as if I had a stem, but I don't know. I'm not sure that I'm going to do that, do it that way. Because you can do it, you know, make it look like you have your stems. But, I don't know. I don't know if I should do that or not. So this is where the, the big decision comes into play. Well, you know what? I'm going to start off here and just do a couple of my bigger leaves. Again, matter of your, your preference. I want to try not to get it into my other flower too much because I don't really want to cover that up. Like I said, I'm just going around and randomly adding, adding uh, leaves. And you might want to say, well, you know, why are you doing it like that? Well, I just go with the flow. And so there's no wrong or right. And I just did that. You, know, you got to think about it in nature. Leaves are not going to be exactly, you know, in one one direction, especially when you have a bunch of flowers, there's going to be movement. They're going to be all over the place, basically. And once again, I just got to make sure you can see this. And I just try to put lines in it. And some of your petals might overlap, or your leaves might overlap. Something you've already painted. And that's okay. It's quite okay. I mean, I just like, I, I have a tendency to probably over, overdo the petals. 
that's me. It's kind of kind of how I roll when it comes to painting. Period. Because I have a tendency to like leaves for some reason. Where to put this at? Nope. And now I'm getting getting myself confused here. Yeah. Like I said, and you can do this with any other flower too. It doesn't have to be my style of of painting. Of, you know my particular flower. You can do this with any any flower that you want. I should turn that back around. Get it better. This direction. A lot of turning around. A lot of turning around. Okay, let's do this. And that's one thing I like about this too. I mean, you know, if you don't like the way a petal looks or a flower flower petal or a leaf, <clears throat> just do it again. It's no biggie. It really, truly is not. And then like up in here. be such a sun sun bright sunny spot in your kitchen to put that on you could even hang this on a wall really it's definitely pretty enough yeah, let me just keep going here And you also, I've seen some people do this with this technique, is do a darker on one side and then flip it around and do a lighter if you want to try to make it look like the sun, you know, you're the shading kind of deal. I don't do it that way very often, but I know that I have seen people do it. And it's, it's very pretty. You know, it can be if you do it right. One thing I'm not not really mastered quite yet is shading. So I feel like I want to put another leaf in there, but I don't know. I don't know. Always go back in and add add where you think there needs to be more. If there's more than what you think, uh, then yeah, you might want to repaint, rethink it. Who knows? I should have some music or something playing. And there's really no as far as like putting, whether I do a bigger leaf or a smaller leaf, I just do it where, where I feel like it looks, looks the best. I'm not, 
into planning it. Sorry, I'm horrible with that. The more I think about it, it's like, really sorry. I guess I'm more, like, more showing you how I do it, but not really teaching you. But I guess you just have to learn to stand back and and look at stuff yourself and figure out you know how it looks to you because you're the one making it and if you like it I guess that's what I always say how do you feel about it you know do you like it do you think it looks good I mean if you don't then redo it I mean there's really no sense of permanency in stuff like this I mean you can it can be I suppose but my thing is, is that you want, want it to be something that, especially when you're first learning, you know, don't, don't, just don't take it so seriously. You know, do it on, on cheap things that you can afford to, uh, to throw out or redo, you know, if it's possible to be redone, you know, like glass. That's one reason I like glassware so well because it is easy to, hey, I don't like how this turned out. You know, maybe you're, for some ungodly reason, you're uh, you know, you, you are trying it a certain way and it's just not working and you decide, you know, because I've had glasses, especially with glasses, I have had glasses that I have painted a gazillion of, and for some reason, I'm doing them, and in one night, it's, I can't paint, paint them worth a darn. And then I just think, you know what, I'm done. Or maybe you get a bottle of bad paint. I've had that happen, where the paint itself just is not good. I mean, it just, it just isn't, and it doesn't flow right. And you'll know, I mean, you'll know when you get something like that. Because especially if you've painted enough, you will understand why, what I'm saying. You, you'll know that, hey, that's just not right. Normally this paint doesn't behave this way. And by behavior, I'm talking about the flow of it and how it reacts with your brushes and the surfaces that you're using and all that good stuff. Now, I'm a little concerned here because I really want some greenery up here around this flower. And I'm thinking, and I don't know if this is going to make sense at all. Probably not. And I'll probably regret doing it. I'm probably going to say, what the heck am I doing here? I work on this just a smidge. And, and you, you know, you can use different brushes too. I'm trying to use one brush size for this. It doesn't seem to be working out so well with this flower or this leaf in particular. And there's so many different ways to make leaves that it's like, okay, how can I do this and straighten it out to something I really like? I think I'll just do it that way, but I don't like that little snippet there. That's not right. But it's like, not, not to panic. No need to panic. I think sometimes you have to watch too the, the buildup of, of paint on your brushes. I can't handle when it when I 
don't have enough paint. So it does matter to me. But anyways, I think I think I'm pretty happy with that. Like I said, I need to get that paint off over here. Okay, so the next step that you can do here is like I had mentioned before, I've gone ahead and fixed up the leaves up here and this area up there got it all cleaned up. And the next step, remember I said about either doing dots or putting some kind of a just just a little marks on here just to kind of give it some just some interest. You know, just a little bit. Not not a big deal. And if you were to do dots or something like that, you know, you could do just around, you know, come into the flower a little bit around, you know, just like on one side. I wouldn't do it dots around, all around the, the thing, but just on part of it. And there you go. And now it's done as far as the painting goes. Uh, what I will do next is give this some time to dry and then spray it with varnish, add the handles, and it will be good to go. All right, I again thank you for stopping by. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I would love you, love to have you as a subscriber. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments. And please share this with others. I would love to, I'm trying to desperately to build my channel and would love it to be shared. Anyways, thanks again for stopping by. Have a good day. See you next time.